Good day, comic fam. Comics of the voice. What am I going to talk about today? I don't know. Sure, why not? I am the voice. Hope everybody's doing well. I like Eternals. The movie, eh, wasn't so great, but you know what? I enjoyed it. And that's all that matters because, you know, I like Marvel's take on stuff when they do the MCU. Um, people have reviewed the books before, so I like the series. So I'm just going to talk about it because, you know, I like it. Um, this actually I picked up was a 9.4 or uh, sorry yeah 9.4 I had it on a stand just like this one it was on a bookshelf and I moved the bookshelf and it fell off and I cracked it and I was like ah. but then I started taking a real close look at it I got my buddy Matt captive audience comics in Oshawa he's amazing on cleaning and pressing so I gave it to him and I said can you do a CPR on it I was originally just going to send it in and get a reholder, but he says, you know, we're up here in Canada, da, Canada da, 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 da. and the cost for sending it down, getting it reholdered and coming back, he goes, might as well just resubmit. It's the, it's cheaper to resubmit than it is to do the reholder. And we get a chance that we might get a grade increase. So I said, okay, crack it out, do your magic on it, send it in. And sure enough, goes from a nine, four to a nine, six. So new case. New, uh, newer label, the bigger one, so I'm happy with it, so very cool. But I also have, like I've said before in my other videos, I got my raw copies because I'm a reader. Yeah, I can have these things encapsulated. Yeah, words are good. In plastic, but you can't read it. It's a hockey card now, so front and back. But I've got my reading copy. I got this from Moe's Attic, another good guy. I see him at uh, cons. I think I got this at one of the Oshawa cons, a little, little mini cons he goes to. So it's Jack Kirby goodness. Uh, this came out in July of 76. Uh, I wasn't quite October, so that means I was that many years old. So obviously I didn't have this at the time, not until much later. Um, but good series. Uh, Jack Kirby's got his unique style of art. Like he always draws these, the, the humans and stuff. They got the square faces. So. What is all this stuff about? Well, most people have probably seen the movies or the movie. They're supposed to come out with the second one. And what happened in the movie? Well, these Eternals existed on Earth. The Celestials seeded the Earth. They put a Celestial inside the Earth and the human life and life on the planet was going to feed it. And then it emerges and kills everybody. Not really the same idea as in the book, but close. Right? The book the celestials have seeded gazillions of planets. They did the same thing on Earth, but they created three species. They did the uh, Eternals, which were perfect, the uh, humans, and then the Deviants, which was a disaster because uh, they were unstable. But the three things existed and they were basically all mortal. So Eternals would reproduce, so would Deviants. But the Eternals were so brilliant and the, the perfect that they couldn't die. So they just live forever. The deviants were unstable, and as they keep changing and mutating, uh, but the deviants were smart with technology, so they would build up their technology, and they basically dominated the earth for the longest time until the Eternals finally stepped in and uh, tried to fight them. But they did a half-ass job. So the Celestials came, and then they kicked the shit out of the de uh, deviants and fired them underwater and destroyed their city and all that good stuff. So apparently, what happens with Celestials is they have what they call four hosts. So they visit the planets four times. So the first time is to seed it. I don't know what the hell the other two are for or something. I probably read it, but this one's all about the fourth host, which is what they call them the hosts. And the fourth time they come back to judge to decide whether the planet is worthy to keep going or uh, the one above all, who was the guy flying the big ship that shows up and he drops all the celestials. And then there was the one that we saw in the movie, uh, Arashman. 
a ration, a ration, something like that. They got these funny names. Um, well, they, they put a different head on them. It was the wrong one. It was Eson, Eson, something like that. It was the actual head for what they did for Ashram. And Ashram is the judge, and he's supposed to basically judge humanity and decide whether they're going to kill everybody off or not. And that's what basically the comic book is about through the whole series. All right, so, uh, yeah, it's all Jack Kirby. I think the inks were the only one that was done by somebody else. It was a John. I can't pronounce the guy's last name. Starts with a B. And, yeah, Eternals. So that's issue one. Now that I've yap hammered on. Issue two, this was the first appearance of the Celestials, because in the first one, the Celestials had come to Earth, but they only saw their ship, and they were causing all kinds of havoc. So how it starts off is um, Icarus, who calls himself Icarus, is uh, in a tomb with uh, archaeologist Dr. something Damien and his daughter Margo. And Icarus obviously knows what he's doing. He's instinctually trying to find a beacon to turn on to guide the Celestials to Earth, and the Deviants want to stop that, so they're, you know, big battle in the first one. Um, so the second issue, as uh, the Deviants have been they kicked their ass again, uh, the Celestials showed up, but they're causing all kinds of havoc because there's supposed, supposed to be a flight crew that has been put in stasis that Icarus finds, releases them, and then they jump into action and communicate with the space gods and bring them to the little pedestals and stuff and it's uh, Ajak, which we saw in the movie as a woman but it's a dude in here and he was an ancient Incan and he was kept in stasis along with the flight crew so every time the host came back they were ready to communicate with them so this is the first appearance of the celestials when they show up and they drop into their place in this big Incan tomb and they build this like this dome over top of it uh, so they can do their thing, which is judge mankind. Issue number three, I also got it in the slab. This is the first appearance of Circe's. So she's in New York City. You know, the, they only had seconds when the dome was being erected over the tomb to get the hell out of there. So uh, the doctor, the archaeologist, decided to stay. And Margot indecisive she didn't want to leave her dad so Icarus basically took her out of the tomb and took her off the mountain and they built the dome and it's impenetrable you can't get in or out so now the archaeologist is stuck in there for 50 years while they do their judgment so Icarus takes Margo to New York City and they hook up with um, Circe's and the deviants are coming up with their new plan they want to just cause all kinds of chaos they want mankind to fight the Celestial, so they're going to make it look like the Deviants are going to attack New York and they're going to come from space so that the humans think that the Deviants are the space gods, so they'll attack them. Kind of a messed up storyline, but sure. Oh yeah, number two. When did this one come out? This was in August of 76. And number three, this one came out in probably, yeah, September. So they're, they're coming out every month. So this was September. So that means this one would be October of 76. So that would be my birthday month. So when I was six years old, that's that many years old, when this one came out. And again, it's all Jack Kirby did everything on this, except for the inks. I'm probably lettering. So this one's called Night of the Demons. And... Basically now, from now to the end of the whole series, it's just Icarus and the uh, the Eternals fighting the Deviants and or stupid other things that show up in there. And unfortunately, the series didn't last more than 19 issues and one annual. So we're talking 20, 20 issues in total. So that's issue number four. Then we got number five. Do I, have I got just one copy of that one. So this one came out in December or November '76, called Olympia. And then you're running into other Eternals now. So there's Mercury, which is Mercury, and then you get to see Zeras. And then um, Zeras 
So that's basically Zeus. His secretary is named Domo, which is in the movie they named the ship the Domo. And that's actually, there was an eternal in here. Was, yeah, basically works as a secretary, I guess we can call him. Executive assistant. It's a proper term. There you go. And that is issue five. Number six. So this one came out in December of 76. Gods men at City College. So now, uh, with the New York City being attacked by the deviants and uh, Zerus sent, uh, sent Mercury, Mercury and Athena. Yeah, Athena's in that one too. She's the daughter of Zerus. Um, so she and Mercury come to New York and they kick the shit out of the demons or the deviants and throw them back down where they belong. And uh, yeah, they run into uh, a doctor, uh, anthropology, and they decide to say, okay, let's let the humans know about the deviants and the Eternals. The Eternals contact this anthropologist and say, all right, these are all the races and basically gives them all the history. So Circes is filling all the history of uh, the Eternals and the Deviants to the doctor. I think there was one guy that was uh, in the class, so he introduced everybody to the class. And one guy was uh, skeptical about them being truthful and it was just a, an act. So Cersei turned him into the thing, which was pretty fun. Everybody was laughing at him. Uh, so this one is number seven. This came out in January of 77. The fourth host. So now we're getting into uh, introducing a bunch of the other Eternals. Or sorry, Celestials. So the Celestials are all now scattering all over the Earth and basically judging and looking at everybody. And of course the Deviants are still trying to uh, attack them and think that their technology is, is awesome but then mankind is also doing stupid stuff too because it was um, the agents of shield they were spying on what was going on in the mountain and one of the uh, it, uh celestials grabbed them and brought them inside and one guy was carrying like a little nuclear bomb and he threw it at the uh celestial it exploded and didn't do anything and it's like oh crap and then they threw the shield agents back into stasis again so everybody is just, you know, typical mankind. You don't understand something, you don't. Just blow it up. Just shoot everything. Uh, this is issue number eight. This came out in February of 77. The City of the Toads is the title. Yeah, they're all different titles in all these. So this one's got more of a uh, talking about the, um, the deviant city that's underwater. So... Crow, which we saw in the Eternals movie briefly, like, well, he was in it a lot, but he only talked at the end there with uh, Athena. Him and Athena got a thing going on. They showed a little bit of that in the movie, but in the comic book, it's a little more, you know, he's interested in her and she's, and eh, there's, there's a gulf between them. But anyway, he shows her around the city and then they have these gladiator matches where they have the, what they call the rejects, which are really messed up versions of the deviants. And they've fight them to the death to each other but of course there was one reject that they just called him the ultimate warrior reject and the guy looked like an eternal and they thought oh god this guy's hideous and then there was another uh, uh reject called carcass carcass he's a big huge red dude kind of like the hulk so they're all fighting having fun oh wait a minute that's gotta put that one up here it's number eight and we'll get into and I, oh, this is the one I have two copies of. Some of them I got two copies of. So there we go. I put that one up there. While I'm reading the back of the one that I put the, the stuff on, my little notes and things. This one's called The Killing Machine. This came out in March of 77. And yeah, it's basically the, the big battle. So while the uh, Cersei, or not, Athena and Crow were in the, the Deviant City, uh, Isan, the one celestial, he was underwater. He came to the Deviant City, and then, of course, they immediately attacked him. He crushed all their defenses, stuck his hand inside the, uh, the city, and it's got some kind of weird electronic eye and stuff inside of it, and then he killed all the power to the city. Because in the Gladiator Arena, they have this uh, force field dome so the rejects can't get out and attack the royal family of the Deviants. And of course, that failed, and uh, the ultimate Deviant warrior guy there immediately started attacking Crow and the rest of the royal family and 
until Athena basically stepped in and said, nope, we're not going to do that. You're going to be my buddy. I'm going to take you back and uh, basically give you sanctuary in um, uh, Olympia. So this is the issue. It's called Mother. Came in April of 77, number 10. That's when Isan killed the power of the city. This one is the one where they were just battling. He was battling Carac Car Caracas. Car Caracas. Some dumb name. Because they got all these weird names. Carcass? Yeah, Carcass. There you go. Like the Carcass. And, oh, I wasn't going to do the rest of them. I was going to stop at 10, but you know what? I'm going to keep going. Because, why not? I got one and three there. And I got issue 11. So this is the one with the Russians. The Russians are coming. So they immediately decide to nuke the uh, Celestial that was watching over Russia. And, of course, it didn't work. And it turned out that the Celestial was just sending a projection to the Russian brains. They never even launched the missile. They all had heart attacks and died. So, again, mankind keeps attacking the Celestial. So it doesn't look good for man. It doesn't look good. Then after issue 11, they came out with a annual, which is just more fighting, fighting, and fighting. So now uh, they come into uh, contact with other Eternals that are coming out of the woodwork and causing all kinds of trouble in the cities. And that's basically the rest of the issues is just war fighting, war fighting. And they have this cool thing called the Unimind, which was in the movie where they join together. In this case here, the, what they were doing with the Unimind was is all the Eternals were coming together, along with two humans, Margot, the daughter of the archaeologist, and uh, the anthropologist, that doctor, Samuel something, uh, were also invited to Olympia, and they became part of the Unimind too. And the Unimind was basically hovering in space and observing everything that was going on, realized what the Celestials were doing here, and said, oh shit, we need to join mankind together or the whole planet's doomed. All three races will be wiped out. Issue 13, got two of those. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to put them up. Getting all for clumped here. It's a good series, I enjoyed this. You know, the, the writing's predictable. Um, issue 14. This is when they had uh, the Cosmic Hulk. So the Hulk, this is funny because it's it's a robot that a bunch of the students of that Dr. Samuel made up because they were bored and they wanted something unique. And this robot turns out to be like almost like the, the coolest, just indestructible robot that these kids built in a laboratory out of nothing. And uh, what happens is the Unimind is wandering through space and ends up empowering the stupid thing because they were... It, it almost killed the doctor and a bunch of the students, so they shut it down. And the doctor says, okay, screw this, get destroy this thing. They said, all right, we'll do it tomorrow. So, of course, they pack the thing up, and then the Unimind comes over and starts firing all these weird waves down. It's cosmic energy, which activates the thing, and then it goes berserk and starts destroying the city. And then Icarus has got to come and try and fight the damn thing. So they spend, like, three issues fighting this thing. And then Zerus has to come down, and then he's fighting the bloody thing. And it just carries on until they end up in some tomb underneath the city. And they find yet another Eternal that was like entrapped down there. And then he starts causing some shit. Oh yeah, one of the issues is a another slab. Wait. Back. I had to pause it for a second. Because I realized I had three Eternal slabs. So yeah. Fighting. So the next one here is uh, issue 17. It's not a key or nothing. It's just, again, more fighting. Now they're fighting against this Eternal that they dug out of this tomb. Icarus tripled himself and he's got more of himself to fight. And then we come to issue 18. Pretty cool cover. More fighting going on. They ended up a... a just ending this thing abruptly. They did have a final conclusion to it that showed up in two other series, two other 
you guys watch uh, Comic Trope, he did a whole thing on this, I think a couple of years ago, and he explains it better than I did. Because I'm just, you know, having fun with it because it's a cool series. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, the movie kind of killed the books. Like, I've had these things for a long time, and they were actually worth something for a minute. Until, but the funny thing about the movie though is it actually grossed a lot of money. It was like four hundred and something million dollars it made, and it won awards. And like it was the first, like the ultimate grossing one for opening day. But I think what what the problem was is they just didn't develop the characters like they did in other MCU movies. That was really the issue. They should have brought them out because it's like a two and a half hour long movie, and they're trying to explain everything in one shot. It's like they were rushing to do this one where they should have just built it up over time, which would have made more sense. But again, I enjoyed the movie. I like the books. This is my take on it. Is it good or bad? I don't I had fun. I enjoyed doing this. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down, thumbs up, whatever. I don't care. I'm having fun with this. So we'll see you on the next one. Actually, the next one I'm going to do. It was Gary B. that suggested it because he gave me NYX number three. So I'm going to read through all six, seven books, six books, seven books. Keep forgetting the number. I think it was seven. We're going to go with seven. And I'm going to do a review on the, the NYX series with Laura Kenny because she's a cool character. So we'll see you the next time.